Let's talk about communication and communicating with your stakeholders. Last week, I spoke about the different types of systems you might use in your business and why you might use them. This week, let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we? I'm Charlie, your online business manager. There's many types of communication in your business. There's the one-off quick questions, just touching base type things that engender community, engender trust, those sorts of things. They don't need a formal uh, channel for communication, but occasionally you're going to have to take something that comes out of that and make sure it makes it into a formal communication channel. Uh, there are the request or problem reporting and updates. So uh, if you're looking at um, someone has a problem, they need to be able to tell you what the problem is. They need to give you all the details for that problem. You need to be able to record uh, asking for that information, uh, their responses, what you've done. Uh, sometimes you want them to see them, sometimes you don't. Um, and then there's, which is the the, the request for problem back and forth. Uh, there are account updates. There are project updates. Uh, there's stuff that you need to record just for your own private records that you don't necessarily need to go out to your stakeholders, but they're important for you so that when you come back, you can look at them and go, oh yeah, that's right. That's what I did with this client. It might be that you changed a password. Or it might be that you updated a server setting. It's not necessarily important to the client the detail of that or your stakeholder, the detail of that, they just need to know that you updated the setting. For you, it's important that you know what you did. So let's get into it and talk about how you can uh, manage all this because I'm not a fan of one channel fits all um, because it doesn't. That's the first thing I'm going to say is not one channel fits all your clients. You're going to have some clients that prefer different methods. I'll come back to that. But I am a fan of one channel fits all or one system fits all uh, to minimize um, confusion, confusion on your stakeholder part, confusion on your part, and to make it so that you don't have so much overhead in your business, managing all the communications and making sure all the information gets to the right place. So I'm going to run through a few things that I do. Uh, as an example, I'm not going to say that they're perfect. I'm not going to say that they are the only way of doing things. I'm sure People have other ideas. And if you do, I'd love to hear what they are. I'd love to hear how you manage some of these challenges. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is start off with uh, the initial communication. Um, not, not the onboarding, but let's assume that we've got your client, your, your stakeholder, your client on board. Let's talk about we're a little bit down the track and they've got a problem or they've got a request to make of you. How do you get them to communicate that to you? How do you get that to, to you and make sure you get all of the information? Now, some people will say, oh, we'll just drop a, a DM to me or an email to me and I'll, I'll, I'll manage all that myself. That's fine. If you can do that, that's fine. If you're happy handling that that way, that is fine. Um, the question I have for you, though, is when you get more than one or two of those coming in every week or every day, how do you keep it straight? How do you remember what you've got to do? How do you remember who you've got to communicate with, what updates you've still got to do? Um, and then later on down the track, when you need to go back and check something, how do you find that information? How do you go through, let's talk about text messages or um, chat messages. How do you go through weeks and days of chat messages, getting thing, information uh, out of it, and then find that one specific piece of information you're looking for. It's really hard. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm reasonably good at this stuff and I'm reasonably really good at using searches and I it trips me up every week. Every week it trips me up. I know I had this conversation. Where did I have this conversation? When we're talking about taking a request or a problem in or an update to a project task, that's where I'd like to, that's where I like to use my systems. That's where I have my support desk. Now, I call it a support desk, not a help desk. It's a support desk. That's where all of my clients can come to to get all of the, to, to make their requests of me. It is their front end into me. And that runs on a web front end. Uh, there is an app for me. I'm sure my clients can actually download the app if they want and try and log into it. Uh, but I run it as an app on my phone so that I get all the updates uh, as I'm out and about. Uh, but for my clients specifically, they go to, they can either email it into an email address or they go to the portal on the web and fill out the web form to get the information to me. 
that then creates the formal request. That, that that's where the formality starts, and that's where the formality will will uh, sit for me. If I need to then break that out into other things like a project, if I need to create a project from that, then I can send that to my project system, create the project, and uh, then use my support desk to do the updates back to the client. Unless it's a really big project, and then I may include the client on the project themselves. The one thing that I don't like doing, though, is giving my client too many things or my stakeholders too many places to interact with me. Um, keep it simple. Make it easy for your clients. Now, I did speak about uh, the support desk being a web portal. There are ways of using your instant messengers to feed your information into your support desk as well. So you can have different channels into your support desk. It doesn't just have to be web. It doesn't just have to be email. It can be instant messenger as well. Um, it can be text message if you use the right systems uh, or you can use the right integrations as well so that someone could send you a text message and it just appears in your support desk. You don't need to worry about automating that yourself you don't need to worry about transferring the information across uh, I still get people though that just drop me an email on my personal email or uh, my my generic support address and I have uh, an integration button that I say oh this is a help desk call this is a help desk request and I hit the button and it creates it in the help desk for me uh, support desk I should use my terminology correctly in the support desk for me and that then gives me a place to keep all of my information I spoke about the one-off quick responses the back and forth the just touching base type stuff once you get a, a request in there's sometimes a bit of back and forwards needed can I get some passwords can you tell me about this oh how would you spell this have you got the words for this now some of that information will need to go into the job. I'm going to put that in inverted commas, the task, the job, whatever you want, the request, however you want to phrase that. And some of that stuff, you don't need it to clutter up the um, the, 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 the fields within your, your support desk. You, you want to try and keep that as clean as possible, but you still want to note that you've asked the client for the information or the stakeholder for the information. You still want to note that you followed them up. You still want to note that they've given you the information. So what I tend to do, I, I really don't like using instant messenger uh, for, for my one-offs and my back and forwards. Um, Facebook messenger drives me batty to be perfectly honest I know there are clients and I do have clients that use it with me and that's fine but it drives me batty and the the the, the smaller number of clients I have using that and using another system the better I actually have set up a discord server uh, and I have channels for each of my clients uh, that want to come on and, and use that with me I have channels for different stakeholders I have general channels where um, my clients my my stakeholders uh, my team can all sort of interact in a friendly community type way without talking business specifically or talking uh, specific business specifically. There we go. And then what I do is if, if things start to go back and forwards on the Discord channel, like let's say I've got a client who's come into Discord, I've got them into their channel and I'm, I'm talking to them about a request they have, but there's that stuff that you need to do that interactive. We need to get this sort of sorted out Um like a phone call but you're doing it via chat we'll go through that chat and then what I'll do is at the end of that I will then copy and paste that into the support desk call and say this was the discord conversation we have we had so it's there I've already copied it across um, there are integrations I could use to, to to make that automated for the amount of time that it happens and the amount of customization I need to do on taking the information out and getting it into um, uh, uh, a brief it's easier for me just to cut and paste it across you might find that and the automation works better for you but then that that keeps you your support desk request very clean 
uh, it gives you the specific information, the pertinent information for the request in the support desk call and all of the ancillary, how are you, how are you going, what's going on, hey, I've got a question about this, do you have time to talk to me about it, when's a good time to talk, uh, all of that sort of stuff is then moved off to the side and you don't have to filter through it when you're looking for your requests. Um, so that's how I interact with the two sorts of the, the two main types of interactions you have with your clients and just I say clients and then I say stakeholders so clients are my are you generally the people that you communicate with the most they're the people that pay you money they're the people that ask you to do things typically stakeholders could be your team your providers um, your clients providers even it might be that your clients ask you look could you contact these guys I don't really understand what they're saying would you mind interacting with them on my behalf that's fine I'm happy to do that I do that regularly because sometimes you know a client will go oh, I just don't understand what they're saying but I do so let me go back and have a chat to them and ask them some really really pertinent questions and get down to the nitty-gritty for you um, now I keep them up to date on that and I keep them in the loop and that's where my support desk comes in really handy because I can just document those conversations I can put transcripts of those conversations into the support desk make sure the client can see them so they can see that I'm back and forwards with them they can also see that I've said look I've sent off a request to the, the provider I haven't heard from them yet I'm still following this up or yep they've got back to me I've got some things to try I'll, I'll be back to, I, this is another two or three days before I can get to it or before I can get you an update not get to it get you an update uh, so that that's the um, what did we call that? The nuts and bolts of communicating. I really feel that you need to have a method where you can have your, your one-offs, touching base, gen generating trust, the back and forward type stuff, and then you need to have somewhere that you can formally record what you've been doing, so that later on when you go and look for something you can find it easily. Now, one of the examples I will give is, um, I'm not saying it happens a lot. Let's say you, the relationship with your client turns a little sour and the client says, oh, you're not giving me the time that you said you're going to be giving me or um, I don't feel like this job went very well. You can go back through your support desk then. You can pull out the information you can create a very quick and easy report and you don't have to filter out all of the all of that other noise that goes on on a day-to-day -day basis when you're working on a, when you're working on something what you have to do though as a provider is to be very practiced and very firm on making sure you copy your information into your support desk ticket whether you use an automation to do it or whether you do it by manually, you do need to handle that. Then you have things like your account updates, uh, information. Okay, yeah, I'm going to use the term account updates. Information that you need to have that you don't necessarily want to share with your stakeholders or your client specifically, uh, but for later on, you want to know how you did something or what you did so that you can um, replicate it. Maybe you have another client that comes along with the same sort of issue. And go, oh, I've done that before. Now, how did, how did I do that? What was the fix for it? Uh, and that's where uh, a good support desk uh, can come in handy. And I'm, I'm going to use the term support desk. And if you don't have a support desk and you want to use something else, I'll, I'll give you a couple of ideas here. But uh, in a good support desk, you'll have a knowledge base. And as you do something, you can uh, say, okay, that's something that I need to note in my knowledge base. Create it, create a knowledge base article. Give the heading of specifically, particular, preferably. That's the word. Preferably, the uh, title of the problem you were resolving, um, the fix that you found, and then document the steps that you went through to resolve that issue, or to address that issue, or to deliver the outcome to the client. Uh, or to your team. For a long time, I didn't have a good support desk. I, I I worked across a couple of things and it got a little unwieldy, but I had it down pat pretty well. Uh, you could use Google Docs and create a Google Doc for each type of, um, oh, sorry, I'd say Google Docs. Google Docs, Zoho Docs, um, I th what's the Microsoft version? A SharePoint 
article in um, for, for Microsoft 365 online uh, and just create an article uh, or a document in, in one of those for the types of fixes that you've been doing. Um, I also have a RoboForm that I use for password management and that has safe notes on it. So I would create a safe note within the client uh, folder and just note things for the client. Uh, I had a I also had a general folder where I would put safe notes in where it's like, okay, so I did this and this is something I'm going to need to know across the board. Uh, so the benefit of all of that is that they are all searchable and you can actually go through and say search all these documents for these terms. Um, you could use hashtags in the documents to make them uh, tags if you like, tags that you could actually search and look for. You could just create documents on your computer and keep your notes in there. Uh, there's a myriad of ways you can record the information that you need to record. Uh, the question that you have is how easy is it to find information once you've stored it and how do you relate that to uh, a particular problem, a particular client, a particular issue? So there's a couple of things that you can have a think about. I really, really like the idea of creating a community for your team and your clients where uh, you can just do your back and forwards uh, communications. That's why I did set up my Discord server for my clients and my team. And it works really, really well. Um, we share some interesting stuff and some good stuff amongst ourselves on that. So why don't you tell me what sorts of systems you use to record your information for your clients? How do you keep their credentials in order? How do you keep your requests in, in place and flowing? And then later on, how do you go back and reference that information so that you can deliver the best possible service you can to your client? I'd really love to know. Please like and subscribe this video and ring the notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. I'll talk to you later.